In an earlier chapter, we talked about the matching principle. There are two uh, parts to the matching principle. And in the earlier chapter, we just um, focused on part one and we did year-end adjusting entries to get expenses in the correct year. But I want to talk about part two a little bit in the context of payroll benefits. Here are two journal entries that we make for payroll benefits. We need to recognize the expenses for payroll benefits such as sick leave and vacation leave during the days and months that workers are actually working. When workers are out on sick leave or out on vacation and get paid, there should be no expense for those workers when they are not working. So what we do is we accrue sick leave and vacation leave as expenses when they're working and when they're out not working, we just pay them cash and we do not debit an expense when they're not working. We just debit the payable and pay them cash. I want to give you another example, this time using warranties. Let's use as an example a very nice truck. Uh, let's make it a Ford. And um, this is going to be the Ford manufacturer. The Ford manufacturer sells this truck first to a dealership, and then the dealership sells it to the retail customer. Uh, the first part of this journal entry is very standard. The standard, most common transaction in the world is to sell inventory. But I'm going to add here these two lines in red because let's say that every truck comes with a two-year standard warranty. The Ford Motor Company has to recognize all expenses and match them to the revenue. And they have to go to the books at the same time. So it's possible that in year two, uh, there will be a claim on the truck. Maybe the horn doesn't work or whatever and Ford will pay out some money in year two, but should not have an expense in year two because the expense would be all estimated and re recognized in, this, in the month of sale. 